211 time element, Sam 3 to copy, 27th at E. Edward, two at gunpoint to a purse, both male, black, early 20s. The first one is approximately 5 foot 4, medium build, white or beige t-shirt, dark varsity jacket, dark blue jeans, armed with a gun. He fired it after he walked away. Did I hear correctly that there's no air support tonight? Check. And second suspect on the 211, 5 foot 8, medium build, unknown clothing with a varsity jacket on top, but unknown clothing underneath. 226 in cash was taken. Alpha 35, um, crime watch was here about two minutes ago. They didn't see anybody running east down. Check. You've lived in Midtown how long? Approximately two and a half months, but I've worked in Midtown for the past two years. You've had some experiences working in a retail store. Any idea what that can be like? I think you relate a situation involving someone who came in with the intent to steal from the store. It was an individual I had noticed that had shoplifted previously, probably a week before. And he came in again, and when I noticed him, I approached him, told him to put down whatever he had and to leave the store. He decided to walk to the nearest trash can, throw all the items in the trash, and to step outside. And he still had something in his pocket to where I approached him again. A slight exchange of words, and then he swung at me. Knocked me out, actually. At that point, you felt that it was appropriate to call the police, or what, what action did you take? My co-worker called the police, and ambulance arrived first. The police didn't show up until after fire left. I would say about 30 minutes after the incident. I see. So this guy is in the neighborhood somewhere. He's attacked you, knocked you unconscious. And, and got away. <laughs> and got away. What was he going to be charged with? Probably just assault. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it would have gone any further than that. I had little to no conversation with the police when they were there. They asked me if I was all right, and they asked for a description. That was I got about that. it. Okay. <laughs> we know that our police officers are running call to call to call. Yeah. Being in the retail business at a neighborhood store, you deal with a lot of folks in our neighborhood. Some of them are homeless. Some of them are just looking for a hand up. Unfortunately, from our experience out here, an awful lot of them are just looking for a handout. You related something to me about a week ago about one of those people that you kind of took an interest in. Could you tell me that story again? Yes, yeah, this is a recently released individual from prison. He was originally put in in 87 for shooting six people and killing two. So he was convicted of two counts of homicide. Yes. Shot six people, two of them died, and he goes to prison for murder. Yes. All right. In his defense, it was for protecting his sister. I throw that out there because that was what he told me. I'm not going to leave something out. That's fair. The part that shocked me was the fact that he was released some months ago, and he's not on parole. Not on parole. Not on parole. There's so, nobody checking up on him. So he's been released from prison without the benefit of being on parole. So he's basically just dumped on our streets. With nowhere to go. With nowhere to go. But the part that was striking to me, killer telling me that he was a killer and he's out here on the street standing here next to me on my 10 minute break. Right. But... He told me that upon his release, since it's not just him being released, he was in the bank of 30,000 people who were recently released, and okay. these guys are all murderers and sex offenders. The story we hear on the news about nonviolent offenders being transferred to local jails and facilities under this bill the governor signed, and it talks about only nonviolent offenders, doesn't seem to jibe with what this guy said. What was it? What was one of the first things he said to you? He said, I killed two people and I'm free, not on parole. I should not be on the street. <laughs> oh, like that's, that, that's, that's what Which kind of goes without saying. Well, you know? I understand. <laughs> yeah. I, I think people would be very surprised, an awful lot of people that we have coming out of prison that are not being supervised is part of the problem that was reported on a local television station tonight. Unfortunately, they didn't go as far as we would have liked to see them go by saying that 
property crimes are up. Well, your example of basically being the victim of a strong-armed robbery, which is a felony, which is state prison time, ends up being nothing, belays to the fact that we don't have enough police officers or we don't have the people to take the kind of reports that should have been taken, and this guy's free to do it again, and again, and again. And which leads on to another thing, because this man, he's already shown he has the potential to do what he did. Right. He did it once. Now, this man is out here on the street, freezing out here in this cold, and he has not a dollar to rub together. Right. Trying so hard not to do again, he, just he to watch that dynamic go on was a little tough for me. The experience of returning to a community, whether it's where he was to begin with, or for all we know, six, seven hundred miles away from where any ties he may have had at some point or another. Exactly. We don't know why this was the particular place that he was discharged to. And that, in our mind, is a central issue here. Why has Sacramento become a dumping ground for state prison parolees when we have 8.3 parolees for every thousand residents? We have approximately 1.2 police officers, which means they're outnumbered seven to one by parolees. And we have half the number of police officers of any other city our size per 1,000 residents. And we're not even going to, in all likelihood, be able to make up for those that are leaving for better pay and a safer job in another community that's in demand for officers or those who put in their 30 years and are going to retire. We're not convinced that we can even keep up with those officers who are leaving our city, which means we conceivably even below one officer for every 1,000 citizens, which is half the police department that does city needs and half of what the rest of the country and cities our size have today. Well, let's hope for a brighter future, but it's not looking that good.